great day. Father, we just thank you today for your goodness and for your mercy, and I pray, Lord, that as we just open up your word, that you would just break it to us and, and share it into our lives, that we might go out of this place enriched, strengthened, and giving you all the glory. And everybody said, Amen. I, I want to speak a little bit this morning about breaking fear and intimidation from our life. Anybody here ever suffer with any of those things? Uh, last week I spoke about Joshua, Joshua 1 and 2, uh, chapter 1, verse 2. But what it, it's really saying there, literally saying, rise up, go over this obstacle, and possess the promise that I've given to you. It says it in a lot of other words, but he's saying, rise up, go over this Jordan, and possess the land that I've given to you. But a lot of us, God's given us promises that we never, ever possess. We never lay hold of them uh, that he's given to us. In, in Joshua 6, 2, it says, See, I have given Jericho, its king, and the mighty men of valor into your hand. Nancy's got a favorite scripture that says, Little by little we take the territory. I think sometimes we think when we get born again that all of a sudden it's like Shazam and we become Superman or Captain Marvel it was, I think, in those days. And, and everything changes. But no, it's little by little you take the territory, one thing at a time. And, uh, but you've got to see. What, what, and then he said, what do you see? See, I've given you Jericho. I've given it to you. It's in your hand. And today it's a lot of things. What do you see? What, how do you see things? I remember a long time ago when we first went to America to live, we, we actually lived on a farmhouse. And um, the uh, owners of the property had a little bit of stuff still in the garage and Nancy was down there rearranging things, which is her passion. <laughs> and all of a sudden, she came up from that uh, garage with a... How many people have ever, had a, ever heard anybody having a scream that they really aren't having? <laughs> You know what I mean? There was this, all the action, but there's very little coming out. Uh, I think that the reason that she didn't want to scream was that the thing that she was running from might hear her and know where she was and come and devour her. <laughs> but she come out of that garage with all this stuff, you know, but very little coming out. And, uh, and when she got upstairs, she said, there's a rat. There's a big rat down there. And, uh, and, I, and I said, where? And <laughs> I had this picture. Nancy's feet were firmly planted in the center of the, of the um, kitchen, but her head was trying to keep coming with me. <laughs> Anybody get the picture? <laughs> she didn't want to go out in that garage. She didn't want to go out there. Anyhow, I, I finally went out in the garage and Nancy got to the screen door and she felt a bit safe there. And now she's going to, you know, this, this, everything's good. And uh, I went over to, to, to get this wrap. And I started to move a few things around. As I moved a few things around, I looked in and what Nancy saw as a rat was actually a very, very baby uh, rabbit. And I said to Nan, come over here and have a look. No, no she wasn't coming over. Because in her mind, she had this rat that was so big. And uh, if you actually would have stretched this little fellow out, he would have been fairly long. But they seemed to huddle themselves up, these little things. And it was, wouldn't have been any bigger than a, 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 a little bit bigger than a tennis ball. And I called her. Eventually, I said, Nan, you've got to come over. And, and I convinced her to come over. And she had a look over and she saw the... She saw that it wasn't a rat, but it was a mouse. It was this, uh, sorry, mouse. <laughs> it was a rabbit. All of a sudden she said, catch it for me. And so I, I caught it and, and she's got it there and she's cuddling it. You see, what really changed the picture? What changed the picture was all of a sudden Nancy realized that what she saw could not hurt her. And the Bible gives us a lot of instruction that no weapon formed against us can prosper. It tells us that he's going to give us power to tread on serpents and scorpions and over all the works of Satan and nothing shall by 
any means hurt us. And so really, we've got to make a decision. What am I going to believe? What I see or what the enemy wants me to imagine that I've seen? Or does he want us to see what he wants us to see? The victory, the victory of the cross of Calvary. The victory that, that Jesus has won for us. He said, I've given Jericho and its king and all the mighty men of valor into your hand. And Joshua had to see. What Nancy saw, first of all, was, a, was this thing that looked like a big rat that was going to devour her. Or are we going to see beyond our natural and see what God said would come to pass? And that's the great question today in all of our minds. Are we going to trust God or are we going to trust our own, thing, our own thinking? You see, God's word cannot fail. You know why? He watches over it to perform it. God watches over his word to perform it. As long as we don't grow weary or lose heart. So today I'd, I'd like to encourage you to rise up, go over the obstacles and possess the promises that God's made available for you. Amen? Father, let's, let's, let's pray. How many people want to cross over something, break through something? Be, be honest. Go over the obstacle and possess God's promise to you. Father, we want to go through. We want to become your people, a people of power, a people of praise, a people who know you and know that you, you're with us. And Lord, that, that we can triumph over every circumstance and over every situation, and we ask that in Jesus' name. How many people know that God's got a plan for man? When God created us, he had a plan. And that plan, he said, I, I don't change. I'm the Lord, I do not change. And, and God's plan for man hasn't changed. He still wants us to be successful. He wants you to be very, very successful. He wants you to triumph. He wants you to overcome. In Genesis 126, he says, let us, let us make man in our own image according to our likeness. Let us make man this way. In Genesis 128, and it says, And God blessed them, and God said to them, Be fruitful and multiply, fill the earth and subdue it, have dominion. In other words, God's plan for us is to be successful, is to be creative, and to become achievers. That's what God's plan for man is. Whether that happens or, or not is up to us. I, was, I, was, I grew up in basically poverty. Not because of uh, any other reason, but because my dad was an alcoholic and because he was a gambler. And he just used to waste our money. And as a result, he worked hard. He worked hard all week. But as soon as he got that pay packet, it was, it was curtains. I spent much of my life chasing my dad around the hotels to try to, mum would send me in there to, to try to get him before he spent the lot. I, I was chasing him one day and a, and a man tried to molest me. Caused great difficulty in my life. Caused me to become angry and bitter and all this junk that got into my life. Other things happened to me as a result of that. I was a target. I was a, I was a victim. But I found out that when I got born again, I can either carry that victim mentality into Christianity or else I can cross over. I can rise up and I can cross over and I can go in and I can possess the possessions that God has made available to me. You see, God wants me to be successful. He wants me to triumph. He wants me to overcome. He wants me to rule and reign with Him. But you see, if, if, I, if I think wrong, if I see wrong, there's a lot of things in, in the Scriptures there that, that we, we hear. Or I was talking to somebody the other day about, uh, about uh, the three wise men. And he was a pastor, and, and, and we were just talking about things like this, and I said, nowhere in the Bible does it say that there were three wise men. 
It says that there were three gifts. That man now has got out of that three wise men. And this pastor said, I've never seen that before. You know why? Because somewhere he's listening, listened to the songs and he's listened to that thing and that's got inside him and that's his belief system. How many people know there's a lot of stuff in our belief system that's got to change? Amen. Because we believe many times a lie. We believe that we'll never make it. We'll, we'll believe that, that, that I'm a loser or we'll believe this or believe that. But until we rise up and, and, and say things and, and go over and possess the possessions, well, we'll stay the same. See, in Ephesians 4.8, it, it says there, it says, Therefore, uh, when he ascended on high, he led captivity captive and he gave gifts to men. We know there that these are the ascension gifts. We know that there's the fivefold ministry gifts for the equipping of the saints, for the edifying of the body, to, so we come to the knowledge of him. And many times we think, well, you know, that's just for some elite group of people, the, ap the, the apostles and the prophets and the pastors and the, and the evangelists and the teachers. And we've all got visions and great grandeur of all these great and mighty men and women that have gone before us that, are, that were evangelists and saw thousands upon thousands. And so we look at that, but then we look at ourselves. And we think that, that's an amazing thing, but it's, that's something there for some elite group. But it says in 1 Corinthians 12, verse 1, Now concerning spiritual gifts, I don't want you to be ignorant. And see, ignorance is not bliss. Ignorance, ignorance will take you down the way of failure. Ignorance will cause you to, to see things wrong. But you see, he gave, it says there, uh, Now concerning spiritual gifts, I do not want you to be ignorant. Gifts aren't just for this elite, elite group of people. He gave gifts to every person on this planet. Every one of us have got gifts, whether you use them or not. There's, there's ministry gifts. There's healing gifts. There's deliverance gifts. There's creative gifts. There's gifts to get wealth. There's music gifts. There's drama gifts. There's hospitality gifts. gifts and many more. All gifts are given to be used in the church life. Some gifts are misused, misunderstood, or lay dormant. I don't know. We're all in that category somewhere. They either get misused, misunderstood, or they lay dormant, or else you're going after God and you want God, and we're saying that things like with that song means so much to me, renew in me a passion for you. Do something, my God, in my life that will change me, that change the way I think and change the way I act, change the way I do, change the way I believe. Can I believe for the impossible? Can we, can we push through and see something so dynamic and so powerful? You see, Satan has a plan to stop the gifts from flowing. And I want you to hear me. And his purpose in wanting the gifts to cease is so that there will be lack in the church. So there'll be lack in the church or in the kingdom of God. Many pastors, and me included, because of misunderstanding and, and because the enemy had shut so many people down from actually manifesting and acting and fulfilling the purpose and the plan that we exist. If he can get you believing a lie and that gift lays dormant or it's misused or it's misunderstood, because you see, when you've got a passion and you see needs and you know that there's a lack in the church, you try to fulfill or you try to fill that hole. And I know so many pastors that have gone out trying to raise money and go into business and 
ended up losing everything and became in poverty because they wanted to see something happen, but it wasn't their gifting. How to be this morning? And look, friend, if I got up there and, and if I put that guitar around my shoulder and I stood there for a little while, if you didn't know me, you might even have to think that I could play it. <laughs> because there I am. But can you imagine if I started to play that thing and try to sing a song and, and strum that thing? And it wouldn't, how many people know it wouldn't take long? Because it's not my gift. But you see, if Dave wasn't here, there's a lack. If, the, if you're not here, there's a lack. <laughs> If you're not fulfilling the role, the plan, the, the thing that, that God has for your life, there will be lack in the church. Gifts can be used for self. How to be if Dave just had his, all that talent that he's got, his studio and goodness knows what else, and, and just went home, never ever came to church, but just sat at home on his own. Playing is a guitar. He'd be playing the guitar, he'd be doing whatever he's doing, but there would be lack in the church. Because you see, what we've got to understand is that gifts are not for self. They're for the body. But you cannot outgive God. If you give your gift to God, He will bless you. I don't believe that we sh anybody should suffer lack. A lot of even successful people could have been more successful if they would have used their gift. So gifts can be used for self and have little use or no value to the kingdom. Or they can be lulled to sleep through intimidation and fear of man. All Christians have got gifts. Amen? Sometimes uh, I had to dig, dig real deep. But I want to tell you, if you keep your eyes on Jesus, he'll look after you. I believe that Jesus wants to see the gifts restored and released in the body, the church, and the kingdom of God. Do you believe that today? God wants to restore them. The goal of intimidation, intimidation will come against your life. Fear will come against your life. The, fear of, the, the goal of fear and intimidation is to make us give up our authority, thereby rendering our gifts inoperative or impotent. A lot of people today aren't using their gifts. If you don't start to function in the gifts that God has given you, if you're intimidated, I hear a lot of people that might come up and say, I had a, I had a prophetic word this morning. Why didn't you bring it? Fear of man. I had this, I wanted to do this, or I wanted to do that. The fear of man stops people from functioning. But you see, when we fall into that trap, it starts to have a domino effect on your life. And the enemy is the bad enemy. And he comes in and he keeps robbing and robbing and robbing and robbing and robbing until where is the church today? And I've seen the enemy come in and steal so much from the church through intimidation through different things. I believe it's a time for God to restore again, for us to rise up, to break the fear of intimidation, to break that thing from our lives. The enemy keeps taking more ground. The answer 
to intimidation is boldness. I don't know how many times because of my natural lack where you're called upon to do something where you have to go to another level in yourself. Not God. God's already done it. But somehow or other you've got to pick yourself up and, and rise up above the, the intimidation that and that the enemy puts on you. It's boldness. In 2 Timothy 1.7, it says, God has not given you a spirit of fear or intimidation, but of power and of a sound mind. Power and a sound mind. It's like that story of the rabbit. We've got to be out. Did I tell that story? About a Denver with the rabbit? I thought I did, yeah. Hey? You should have seen Nancy after she got it. She cuddled that thing. To overcome and be bold, we must understand where our strength comes from. In uh, Psalm 27 verse 1, David said, The Lord is the strength of my life. Of whom shall I be afraid? Jesse Duplantis tells a story. He was in a, um, he was out bush, this is many, many years ago. And he was on a farmhouse. And uh, he said he, he was out there and anyhow he turned off the light to go to bed and got into bed and all of a sudden, this from the corner of the room, this thing came. <laughs> And he was terrified. He said, his eyes started to get a bit bigger. And all of a sudden this thing went, again. And this kept happening. And, and he found himself getting higher and higher and higher in the bed. And he was, he was there. And, and he was doing everything that he could do. He was, he was making all the right noises. And he was... Uh, Shouting and spitting and cursing and, and everything else. And after a period of time, he was sweating like anything. Up in the corner of the bed, the sink hit. And he said, he realized that there was a light switch right beside him. And he turned the light on. As he turned the light on, he found to his amazement that it was a raincoat. In the hanging on a on a on a one of those hook things, they had an oscillating fan in the room, and the oscillating fan would fill this raincoat. And it goes, Psalm 127 says, David said, The Lord is the strength of my life. Of whom shall I be afraid? <laughs> Scared of a, uh, of a, of a raincoat in, a, in the corner of a building. There's another guy who was in, a, was in his bedroom, turned off the light. There was a moonlight night and you could see a little bit of a silhouette and as he was laying in his bed, all of a sudden he could see this thing go past his window and disappear. Terrified. Terrified. 
he had a double barrel shotgun beside his bed. And he sat there. And he waited. Next minute, boom! Blew the thing to smithereens. Went over to the window and had a look out. He just blew his overalls <laughs> to pieces. They're, they're on a hill's hoist that was going around in the breeze. Is, I think it was Smith Wigglesworth. He was laying in bed and this demonic force came up beside him and woke him up. He turned his head and he had looked around and said, oh, it's you. And went back to sleep. Something, when intimidation comes, if you just ignore it, it'll go away. Smith Wigglesworth obviously had a faith in God that I pray that we all get one day. What intimidates us will not go away. It will control us until we confront it. Shambuck. Anybody ever heard of Shambuck? He was terrorized. You know what? I find that so many Christians today are terrorized by the enemy. And he was terrorized by this bully at school. In those days, they used to carry their books with a belt around them. And he said this bully would find him. No matter how hard he tried to dodge him, he would find him. And he would undo his books and he would beat him up and, and Shambuck was... Anybody know who Shambuck is? Great old revivalist preacher. And he was in you know, all this, this trouble and, 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 and here's Shambuck there. He, he didn't know what to do. He didn't know how to, how to confront it. Every day his books were getting... Be and he was getting beat up and his books were getting spread all over the place. And one day he decided he was going to confront it. One day, friend, I want to tell you this. As Christians, we've got to stand up one day and say, enough's enough. Enough's enough. Don't keep running from it. He kept running from it, running from it, running from it. And then he had this bully this day came again. And as he walked up to him, and this time instead of Shambuck running off and getting all hurt, he just, he just stood his ground. He put his books down and as this bully walked over, he put his fist up here somewhere and he gave him the greatest smack in the mouth he could ever give anybody. And this guy went down like a bag of spuds. And Shambach said, I didn't know he had a glass jaw. Friend, I want to tell you this. A lot of things just won't go away. You've got to know who you are. Glass jaw. Little by little we take back the territory. Joel 2, verse 25 said, So I'll restore to you the years uh, that the swarming locust has eaten. Swarming, crawling, consuming, chewing. God wants to restore the years where the enemy has controlled us, where the enemy has, has pushed us around, intimidation, fear, sickness. And, and I believe that God wants to do an amazing work in our lives. Friend, it's not a time to walk away. It's a time to get a hold of God. It's not a time to, 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 to play. It's a time to get a hold of God. It's a time to let God be God. And, and you know, it's going to take sometimes in, on the inside of us, everything on the inside of us to rise up. There's times there in our lives when, when, when we just want to run. When things aren't going right. But friend, I want to tell you, if you can stand your ground with God, He will see you through. If you, can, if you can just open up your heart and let the King of glory come in. Let the fire of God and the anointing and the power and the, the victory of the cross of Calvary flood our being. Get a hold of God. 
let God be God in our lives. Not, not let the enemy triumph over us. I remember Nancy is that day with, the, with, with that bunny. She was down there, I don't know what, playing in, in the, doing stuff in the, in the garage and this thing came running in. And as she saw it there, she screamed and ran. She couldn't even speak properly. She was so this thing was there and uh, it's a rat. It's a big rat. And in her mind, this thing was so big. But all of a sudden, she confronted this thing and now she's got it in her hand. And I believe that there's something that we've got to do. We've got to come to confront the enemy. We've got to stand up and we've got to call his bluff. Shambuck, this bully that had bullied him and bullied him and bullied him. Friend, you've got, many of us have got things in our lives that have, that have harassed us, that have, that have pulled us down. Fear of man, the fear of this, the fear of that. And until we confront some of these things, we'll never get the victory. And, and Shambuck that day when, when he was, everything else had failed, he'd gone past and, and he thought, well, I'm just going to have to confront this thing. And I want to tell you this, some things in our lives that have, that have broken us and brought us down and, and, and if I can say it like this, even rendered the anointings and the presence of God and the, the, the victories that God wants us to win, rendered them harm, that we, we end up in defeat. But if we can rise up and, and get a hold of God and allow that anointing again to rise up within us, and, and sometimes you get pushed into a corner. I remember when we were going to start our school, and because I left school when I was 13, and education and myself didn't really gel. It was like oil and water. And it didn't bother me until. You see, God won't leave us like that. He said, I want to sort this out with you, Neil. Because you've got an opinion of yourself that I don't have. You think that about yourself, but I don't think that about yourself. You think you're a failure, but I say you're more than a conqueror. And I remember the, the confrontations and the troubles just trying to break some things. I don't know about you, you must surely go through some things too. But friend, I want to tell you that these things have got to be confronted in your opinion of yourself. Let God be God today, amen? Let God show you. Yes, there will be wars. Yes, there will be battles. Yes, there will be trials. But I'll tell you what, if we can keep following Jesus, we'll conquer in the end, amen? We will win in the end. The Father, today I just pray by your Spirit. And I pray, Lord, that today that no, Lord, that your anointing would just come over this place in a special way. Lord, in myself, I, 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 I just pray that, that, that you go beyond my ability, beyond even what I've said and what I haven't said. But my God, as you're speaking with people this morning by your Spirit, as you're touching people, my God, as you're drawing people, as you're, as you're awakening abilities within people, my God, Shambuck had to, had to face that thing. My God, and he found out that God, God could do more than he could ever imagine or think. Because, Lord, you don't want to leave us in that, in that state. You want to set us free. You don't want to leave us in, in that limbo, Lord. You want, to, you want to break the stronghold of the enemy. You didn't want to leave me in that, in that state, Lord, where I was at. My God, where, where I thought that I was a failure and, and Lord, but you wanted, to, you wanted to say, hey, I could be more than a conqueror through you. And Lord, you want to show that to the rest of us, every one of us, my God, that we can triumph in everything we do. And Father, I'm praying right now for this people, Lord, because I believe, Lord, that there's things that you've got for us to do up ahead. And I ask you, Lord, that you'll help us to break through, to break through the glass ceilings and triumph in Jesus' name. And everybody said, Amen.
as the musicians come this morning, I would imagine today that there are things that are in, around our lives, things there that we thought we'd never ever be able to triumph in, things that we'd never be able to overcome, things there that, that we just thought that was it, that's my lot, but God wants to deliver us. He wants to set us free. Let's stand to our feet this morning. And if you're in this house, and an intimidation or fear of man or whatever it might be might get a hold of you. I can remember trying to do the ACE program, starting the school up at Wombai. I didn't want to do it because <laughs> I didn't have education. But God wanted to break a stronghold over my life. You know, God's a good God. God is such a good God. He wants to set us free this morning. And if there's intimidation over your life, if there's things there that, that you find harassing you, friend, they've got to be confronted. They've got to be dealt with. You've got to overcome. If we're going to go to the next level, if God's going to raise us up to be a voice, there's some strongholds that have got to be broken. Amen. Let's just begin to worship. Let's begin to worship. Let's begin to worship, friends. Come on, lift up your hands.